Warning! This podcast contains ghouls. Or a ghoul. Singular ghoul. A singular ghoul. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SCN TV podcast for Sleepy Hollow, Season 3, Episode 12, Sins of the Father. I'm your host, Dom. With me, my co-hosts, Cleo. Hello. And Kim. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. What'd you guys think of this episode? What'd you ladies think of this episode? It was good. It was a good uh-huh. episode. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I actually just, I didn't know that was the name of the episode. Hmm. Sins of the Father. I didn't realize. Um, whose father... Whose sins? Is it Corbin's sins? It's everybody's. Yeah, it seems to be everybody in this episode. <laughs> it's it's plural. Right, because cause, uh, Ezra also um, confessed what he, why mm-hmm. he left and all that. Yeah, I mean, it was great because we, we saw Jenny sit down, and I'm, I was glad Jenny sat down and met with her father, right? Expecting yeah. it. I was like 100% expecting it, but I was glad she did, you know, and he kind of explained the whole situation which really didn't paint him to be a very bad person you know he he left because he was trying to better himself he was an alcoholic he was in a really bad place um you know he went and stayed three tours uh, in the army military and uh when he came home his wife was dead and his kids were in foster care he was ashamed because he ran out you know even though he was trying to do it for a good reason he was ashamed, and I was like, you know what? He's really not that bad of a guy. I, I don't fault him, you know? That's that's how I felt after the conversation with Jenny. But yeah. then, then it was the conversation at the end, which really surprised me. I didn't think Abby was going to go meet him. No, me I, neither, I, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't think so either. It, when she started asking about her mother, I was like, oh, that's why she had to talk to yeah. him. Mm-hmm. She needed to know if she was actually going crazy, or if because, I mean, her mother went crazy, but that was because she was seeing mystical things. Right. Which is but, kind of Abby's which, situation now. Yeah. But, but, I mean, I guess we can ask the question, is this legitimate psychosis or is it mystical psychosis? Because it I don't could think end it's... up being, hey, she's just got normal psychosis. No, that would be way too uh, no, in- yeah. coincidental. You know, like, there's there's no way. Like, this... this... But, I mean, we're, we're seeing, like, PTSD signs, and and if I don't, I I guess we don't know what is causing it. It's just that both Abby and her sister end up being witnesses, and then her mother yeah. was seeing strange things, and it's just like uh, there's more going on with this family than than we realize, and I, I think it's gonna end up being uh, a familial bond that is drawing this kind of thing to these specific people. Um. Because we you we ended up after last week after the show uh, ended we ended up looking up the symbol didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, um, we and did. I have it I have it right here. Okay. Uh, it is known as the Othala rune mm-hmm. or the Odal rune. Okay. <clears throat> um, sometimes it's it's missing the little feet that go up. The uh, the arms because it, it the way Abby was doing it at the end she was yeah. like you know yeah. Yeah. Um. There's there it means lots of different things weird heritage things like things you inherit inherit mm. uh, mm. it's uh inheriting uh, psychosis maybe yeah maybe it seems it's leading in that direction with their mother it seems that that's that that sounds yeah mm-hmm. yeah what are some of the other ones um well it's that that's the main thing mm-hmm. there's a lot of weird little things but it's it's uh anglo-saxon sort of like Dramatic Norse stuff. Uh, sometimes it is um, uh, uh, connected to Odin, like on his the uh, hammer thing. Gotcha. Um, I think I think mostly because he has sons and stuff like that. Why it's connected to him? Hmm. Uh, what are the other little things? Weird. Yeah, because I was reading it. It was the her- heritage and inheriting. Uh, stuff was the biggest thing 
Right. See, and and the the thing that leads me to believe that it's not just regular psychosis is that uh, uh, Ezra specifically stated that it's almost as if she was living in two different realities. Yeah. So I was like, eh, no. No, this is definitely something that went on with her. Like, she could have been just as deep into all this as Abby was. Yeah, and I, I mean, she probably was. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and but... And unfortunately, like a lot of pagan things, it's, it's been attributed to Nazism. Hmm. Nazis gotta well, ruin... Everything. Gotta ruin all those everything. old symbols. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was that, Kim? Is it every to ruin everything? Mm-hmm. Well, it's Hitler was into all of that. That's that mythic, you know, mythology. Yeah. He was into all of that stuff. So it made sense that yeah, he they'd take all these symbols and you know, obviously with all the shit they did in history, fuck it all up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the the big their biggest symbol, the swastika, is actually a Buddhist symbol for peace. Right. Yeah. Or some shit. And like when you see it in like these ancient Chinese things, it's just like. Huh? Like, Nazis nice, really nice job, cultural Hitler. appropriation there. Nice job. Is it exactly the same, or is it like inverted facing the other way? It might be inverted. Yeah, I'm almost positive it is. And yeah, I think they, it's a different direction. They did but that to be like, I don't know, different. But, but yeah. still, I mean, with with history and all of the culture and everything, the first thing people are going to see when they see it is of course, Nazi symbol. of course, not what it was originally, and not what. Even if it was the right way, it just doesn't matter. They're going to instantly connect in their brain with it being the swatch. Yeah. And the same thing, this rune, it means a bunch of different things. So they could go and be like, oh, well, everybody thinks it means this, but in actuality it means this. Because the show's done stuff like that before. That they, they just take what we think is the meaning of something and completely rip it out from under us. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that's famous really, for what we know about people like Thomas Jefferson. And they're like, nope, this isn't what Jefferson was doing. This isn't mm -hmm. what Franklin was doing. So they could do that with a symbol, too. And this is worded. I found another site and it's worded interestingly. And I think this is probably the closest to what we're talking about. Uh, ancestral spiritual power. Mm, there you go. Okay. Yeah. And because... We we saw Pandora and we saw the, the nameless one. Um, yeah. We saw them at the beginning and they're having this you know discussion and he's just like, "You want to be my equal? Well, you're gonna suffer as much as I've, I'm suffering." And you can tell Pandora is not enjoying it at all. No, I definitely think she's gonna turn on him. I'm really on that whole thought that she is going to turn on him. Yeah. Maybe not, but that's that's it, where my brain sits. It really it's feels just... that way. He's not treating her right. No. Oh, no. Not at all. And uh, we're going back to what we were talking about earlier. I, I'm thinking that we're going to get this thing where there's going to be this whole connection through her whole family line that it's all connected somehow. Mm -hmm. With all these yeah. symbols and all this stuff. So I think we're going to learn watch, a lot about family. Watch her um, be related generations and generations down to... Um, uh, what the hell is the girl that's been in every episode of this in the flashbacks? Oh, uh, uh, Nikki Reed's character. You mean Betsy Ross? Betsy Ross. Ross. Yeah. Watch there be some connection, like well, way well, down the line. I mean, we know we know who her ancestor in that time was, though. It was oh god, the woman who worked at the the house that Katrina worked at or lived in. Right. Whose but journal that is. That's not to say that she can't have other relatives in that time period, yes. you know, so. That's true. that's true, and especially we know through, I mean, obviously, if you've done any history with Thomas Jefferson and any of these other guys, <laughs> they, they they slept with their slaves and they had children and their children were actually came out white and not, some of them came out white and could pass as, as you know, as white and not as black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Rachel in chat is saying uh, that the, the man with the name is just not treating Pandora's box right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We that almost spent a whole episode not talking about the box. You, you can't talk about Pandora without discussing her box. Um, you mean the box lady? <laughs> crazy box lady. Crazy. Um, yeah, but uh, Ezra is not the only father holding secrets this episode. We, we find out Corbin uh had this hidden folder right and we find out at the very end of the episode 
that uh, the the folder is um, oh I I wrote it uh, and I sites? yeah Holy sites? uh yeah exact coordinates of nine sacred sites sacred sites yeah so I was like what the hell so I don't know this this show I love this show and I dislike this show all at the same time. There's certain things that interest me, and then there's certain things that drag. This particular episode was one of the ones that dragged until all of a sudden they mentioned the nine sacred sites. And I was like, <gasps> I need to know what these are. And like, <laughs> you know, it's just, because I get it. It's a very plot-centric episode. I, I prefer more action. I didn't, we've seen the ghoul and all, you know, s things like that before. Like, this didn't seem like anything too crazy that we, we, you know, out of the ordinary. It was linked, you know, to the scarab. Um, yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah, no, it was interesting, but it didn't seem like, I don't know. It, like, the other monsters I that they... Found you found what? Clear keeps... Sorry, I found Abby's... I think I'm lagging. Yeah. Uh, but I found Abby's... Um, struggle this episode the most compelling thing like yeah. i am yeah the, the sacred sites are like ooh, what's that but when she was all up on that wall i was like what oh when yeah. she seemed like she was like talking to somebody else like you saved my life okay i like give in to you like yeah, has someone like, been I... like so someone else has been talking to her this whole time or at least in her brain someone else is talking she to her said you saved time? me i'm yours what does that mean who is that We've saw no one else. We've seen no one else. Other than I'm like, you know, start like putting weird things in my head. Maybe she's ta talking to Pandora in the, like, in the, the, the back end. Like now that Pandora, maybe Pandora is turning on, you know, so she is turning on him. And now Pandora is like trying to work with the witnesses to do some shit behind everyone, behind, you know, the faceless one's back or some shit. I don't know. No. Pandora's not. Honestly, Pandora's always been with the things she does. Even, like, going to, to talk to Abby while she had the, the, the Eye of Providence. Mm -hmm. She went straight to her and was like, Get, you know, give it to me. Blah, blah, blah. Let's make a deal. Yeah, but you what know? if she's being so sneaky? I don't think, she's, I don't think she's, she's going, you know, this is pretty esoteric if she's, if she's behind it. Right. I don't know. I mean, remember in the beginning, obviously in the beginning of the season, she was being sneaky. So, I mean... Sneaky, but not... Sneaky, but she was still, like, doing stuff herself. She was using the creatures, but, like, she was still out and about. Like, yeah, she, she put on a nurse's uniform, but... So it's possible that we have a new player on the field that we don't know. Who I, I think so. Yeah, it could very well have something to do with the, the sacred sites. Yeah, and it might have to do with Abby's that, ancestry. Because Crazy sending... shit that happened at the end. Sending uh, Abby to that place, right, it was very deliberate. And for them saying that the stone was the only way out, and then she destroys the stone and then finds a way out, almost seems like as if they planned for her to mm. get out, and whatever she did is what caused her psychosis. Or maybe it's just the fact that she was there in the first place caused her psychosis. But either yeah. way, like, I, I feel like it's... This was part of their plan to begin with, and it, whatever this is doing to Abby is is where it needs to go for them. No, because you saw how upset they like both Pandora and the Hidden One were when they found out the the Eye was destroyed. They well, were well, yeah. yeah. I'm not you, saying. You, wait, what you were saying though makes me think that destroying the Eye, this is the consequence. It could be. Because that could be the other. Maybe she is the eye, or, or has like she's become the eye. Some weird. Uh, yeah. Um. We'll go back into what we were talking about. You know, we know that Betsy Ross was in this other world at, at one point because of the the sword. Right. Now, what if her mother it was in this ended up in this other world at some time or other because this whole remember she two worlds say thing whatever she had going on in her head too that that Abby's now dealing with. Maybe her mom ended up in this world somehow, some way too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the impression that I got as soon as uh, Ezra said that, and I was just like, "Ooh, that's gonna be interesting." Yeah. Because it, it, Abby clearly went to him like trying to find out information on how to help herself, so she didn't get to the point that her mother got. 
So she's mm-hmm. looking for the early signs and, and what her mother was going through. What so. what if this is, this is crazy this is a crazy theory. Okay. It's crazy theory time. Ooh. What if the person she said saved her is actually Betsy Ross? That would be interesting. Because because that she got be... out by following Betsy's clues. Right. So that would be what really she's... interesting. Yeah, what if Betsy is like a weird higher power, some thing, weird like power thing. thing? Yeah, I don't know. We don't know what happened with Betsy like after Crane went into you know the ground and like disappeared either. So she could this could have been yeah. all like all the stuff with Betsy Ross in that world could have taken place after Crane was already horseman linked, dead and buried, you know, under yeah. underground. So yeah. Yeah, this that's is what why I'm thinking, Crane because... wouldn't know anything about it. Yeah. So yeah, um, but so but yeah, but Ezra is not the only one hiding shit. Corbin had that that whole folder and everything, and you know, the, it's like how did they not discover this folder? Yeah, because I remember in season one, Abby going through that uh, that bookcase, that uh, file cabinet, really thoroughly. It's like how did you not find the secret hideaway bit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is kind of weird. I mean, they've I mean, they've pretty much picked things clean. I mean, they're pretty thorough in any I mean, anything they've ever done gone through. So to yeah. to miss that is it's pretty I mean, it had to have been super like hidden or some shit. I mean, we know yeah. Jerkface knew what it was, but Nevins, yeah. Or Nevins. They, he's Jerkface. Uh <laughs> so that don't matter. No, yeah, Jerkface is Randall. Randall was <laughs> Jerkface. They're also dead now, so it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead, so yeah, it don't. <laughs> yeah, Randall oh, yeah. tried to overtake uh, Nevin's operation. The ghoul kind of ended up overtaking him. Uh, you know, that that was kind of interesting. The um, hand through your chest, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like the the ghoul having the the weakness on his chest, having the the scarab, that was interesting, but it bothered me at the same time. It's like. It's like the when you guys you guys watch the Power Rangers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like when Lord Zed came down and made his putty patrols, and you put a big Z on their chest, and it's like, here's their weak spot. Just punch that Z. It's a big fucking bullseye but right in their chest. It wasn't his weak chest. His weak point in that spec. It was his weak point was the scarab itself, which he didn't carry on himself. He just carried the symbol of the scarab on his body because it was the scarab that he was attached to. Yeah. But, the but here's the thing. The scarab acted like, you know, like a, a wireless power supply for him because as soon as they knocked it off, it, it uh, disabled him. Oh, yeah. No, but, but he functioned for fucking ever without it because Nevins had the scarab and was controlling him with it. Mm-hmm. So right. he's like, want to see a trick and made him absorb the scarab. It's like that. What did that do? That did nothing. It made him vulnerable. I don't. I didn't. That I didn't understand. Yeah. I yeah. I, that was really dumb of him. I don't think he was. He. He, he would. I don't think he felt felt that like thought that through very well. I think he was just like, well, look, unless, look, it, made, unless it made him more powerful, but. It could have, but it's just like you look at it the way the thing just like put its arm through Randall, and then you look at the way it's just like taking them and slapping them around and throwing them around. It's like just put your arm through them, <laughs> you know. That would be the easiest. Did you did you see that cartwheel it did over the table? They can't die. He's not allowed to do that. <laughs> that that cartwheel that that was some gymnastic level cartwheel there. TV show mechanics. TV show mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah. But yeah, it was interesting to see that Nevins had the scarab like smuggled in his body. Like That was gross. Yeah. I liked it. He took he took out his spleen, which was enough room to put the scarab in. <laughs> yeah. But when uh Daniel gets a phone call, he gets it from Jack Walters, right? Who who is like have we met him before? He looked familiar we, to me. We've seen him. He's the one that Daniel's been talking about, like in hushed oh. tones about Abby. Yeah, okay. that's yeah, that's we saw him once because he went to their he went to their his house once. It was like, oh, what episode was that? It was way in the beginning of the season. I'm getting a very Vernon Masters vibe from him. Mm. But uh, Agent Carter, if anyone's oh, yeah. watching. 
But, I mean, he's ob- they're obviously all in tune with all of the shit that's going on. They know what's going on, him and his little whatever his group or whatever the fuck's going on in that situation. This is a whole nother side story mm. that we don't know that I'm interested to see exactly what's going on in that situation. Obviously, that's because we heard nothing from them or him or for, you know, what is it? I think because he was like the first or second episode of the season. Yeah. But I think so it was like dead. And it was like, we for, you know, forgot about it. And then all of a sudden he's bloop, we're back up again. And here we are and causing problems. Not Well, not <laughs> even like big problems. It was just, you know, they wanted something. He wanted something. And then he, they got, he got their stuff and then he shot him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sally says she also thinks Betsy Ross will be important later on. So, yeah. They, they've dragged her into too many of the stories this season to make her not important, so... Yeah, for her to not be relevant. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that last episode. It felt like she was just being thrown random all over the place for no apparent good reason sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, with Jack Walters, he, he um, ordered the downgraded search on Nevins. Uh, Daniel's like, what? He's just like, because I ordered it. End of story, you know? And then we find out Nevins is in the car... That's when we learn about the nine sacred sites, and after he gets the info, he just outright kills Nevins. Yeah. In his car. Another shit Doesn't face. matter, I'm retired. Yes, you are. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Blood everywhere, I would assume. Another mm-hmm. shit face bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, all in all, it was a decent episode. I liked the the plot the story aspect of it did not like the flavor of the weak monster it was not interested at all no so the that 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 plot was not i mean obviously i don't think it obviously was not the main plot of the entire episode right but it was it literally was just something they tossed in there to be like well we need a monster here's a monster to 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 be around all the other shit that's the important shit i thought (laughs) i don't i don't know i thought it was weird like why was there a ghoul in a cave in afghanistan yeah, that whole I don't know. I didn't understand the the I, like I we didn't talk about the flashbacks because I really honestly I didn't understand them. So maybe this would be yeah, a good thing to talk I about. Know. Like, I think, I think they, it's it seemed like a big stretch. Yeah, I mean not not a stretch, but certainly not something you'd think would be indigenous to the place that they found it in, which yeah. probably wasn't. But you know, I don't. Yeah. Know. But, <laughs> Go deeper on the weird mystical or weird monster. Yeah, book. didn't make any sense to me at all. Um, but uh, outside of that, some of the funny moments was uh, Chef Crane. You know, making dinner for Abby. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Okay. So the first thing that came out of my mouth, I'm like, stop singing. <laughs> oh God, he's the worst. I was like, oh, God, no, don't do it. Why, why didn't you want him to sing? I thought it was lovely. I'm like, you're a beautiful man, and I'd like to do bad things to you, but don't sing! <laughs> the, act- the actor can sing really well. I don't know why he was singing this Italian op- opera so badly. <laughs> it's because he was singing the Italian opera with the accent. I guess, yeah, probably. Maybe, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't, it was just... He 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 did not have an Italian accent. He had his British accent. It was awful. <laughs> his colonial accent. I don't I know. Like, what what just, would you just, classify his accent as? It is British. Is it? He is British. Okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I mean, just... It's not a modern British. Right, right, right. So it, it's 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 a a song. It's an Italian song, Italian language, with a British accent. <laughs> with a British accent trying to do an Italian accent, so that, uh, that's yeah. that's why it came out that way. Okay, I just like I was just like, shut up, keep cooking, be pretty, please stop it. <laughs> <That> is... <laughs> he, Don't stop pretty. He goes from making this this lovely spaghetti four cheese meal uh, to making a Charlie Brown sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> He was make he had the sandwich for himself. He was making the dinner for Abby. Right. 
Yeah. He really doesn't. I mean, like, I'm sure he doesn't put thought into what he eats himself. He's, but he's was, all his thought is going towards Abby right now. It was really sweet. It's like you saw like how he made the dinner. He he slaved over that stove working on this this yeah. meal for Abby, and then Abby's just like, I don't have time to eat it now, and she like rushed out, and you just saw him like staring at the plate like. <sighs> That was a lot of it work. Was, that was sad. That was a. That it was, was but then you he, see at the end when when she tells him he's making a Charlie Brown sandwich, he's gonna make him a, a sandwich. He just turns and he goes, "Good grief!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yes." Crane has watched what Charlie Brown. She, what did when she said Charlie Brown? He was like, "What the bald child with problems kicking the ball or something?" Yeah. Like yeah. that. Type- I'm Charlie Brown. I was just like, oh, you've been catching up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so it was great. Um, but then, you know, she ended up making him a sandwich. So it kind of kind of balanced out. They're, they're helping each other out there. Mm-hmm. So uh, anything else for this episode? No? Mm, no. Uh, next week's episode is called Dark Mirror. As a monster resembling the fabled New Jersey Devil... Ravages Sleepy Hollow. Crane must draw on his past to find the connection. (laughs) Meanwhile, Jenny and Joe stumble as they navigate their new relationship, and Abby continues to struggle with the aftermath of her trauma. I missed the prompt in my DVR recording. Hmm. Didn't catch it, but the Jersey Devil. I love that shit. Yeah, it should be. Well, you, you especially, because you're not very far from Jersey. Mm Mm-hmm. So that is like an urban legend that hits really close to home. Mm-hmm. And how how far away is Sleepy Hollow, New York, from you? Not that far. No. No. You can make that's that's easily a day trip for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a day trip for me. I can't say it's more than forty five <laughs> minutes away. Yeah, it's probably. Well, f- what direction? No, because I don't know. I gotta go north. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know one night when we were driving, Sarah and I were driving back from your house, mm-hmm. Dom, and uh, we were going, I, like, I was, a na- I was sleeping, and I woke back up, and it was nighttime, and we were driving through these trees, and my phone was like, oh, we're going to get attacked by the Jersey Devil. That was the first thing that popped into my head. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, all, we're all on the East Coast over here, like Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania area, and, and Jersey Devil is like a thing that we hear about all the time, so it's going to be interesting to see I mean, how... It's a hot- team it's it's such a beloved urban well, legend yeah. that's a hockey team yeah and sarah uh i mean sorry uh we were just talking about sarah sally in <laughs> chat says uh they need to do mothman which would be really cool too oh yeah so. that'd, be, that'd be a good one too yeah but i don't know the episode here is called dark you mirror and not fuck it up. right the episode here is called dark mirror so i'm hoping we see more of that mirror uh entity thing that we saw uh, a couple oh, yeah. episodes ago i really liked that that was very interesting yeah so, I think that about does it. Cleo, where can the people find you? They can find me at Cleo Moto on places such as Twitter, Twitch, and Pinterest. Excellent. I need a new computer, so streams will probably happen. Ooh. Kim, where can the people find you? They can find me on the Twitters at H U F F I T Y P U F F I T Y. And it looks like I may be doing a stream Friday night. Mm. Uh, my, Twitch, my Twitch is Biramu. How do you spell um, that? B e e i r a m e w. B e e. B e i r a m e w. Okay. B. B. So uh, I will be doing. Uh, it's uh, the the. Oops, the faces of fear. What is the fear thing? Whatever the other game is. Layers of fear. Layers of fear. That's. Oh. I unfortunately will not be watching you because I just recently got the game myself, so I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. So sure. I'll I'll probably pop in just to say hi I'll and watch. just and black I the screen out. Anyway. <laughs> you can find me down below at Phenomenon. P H E N O M E D O M. You can find us all <laughs> on Facebook, Gmail, G Plus, Twitter, <laughs> Space, and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows games, and movies. Uh, Till next week. See you guys later. And uh, Rachel, Sally, thank you guys for joining us in chat live. Bye-bye.